Let me paint a picture for you. It's the year 2000 and you've just rented Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. You get home and you excitedly put it in your PlayStation or your Nintendo 64. After the opening screens and the Activision and the Neversoft logos fade away, you are suddenly bombarded with the chorus of Guerrilla Radio by Rage Against the Machine. And some of us in that very moment were introduced to Rage Against the Machine. And that wasn't the only band. Through that game, we were introduced to several great artists, Power Man 5000, Millen Collin, uh, Lagwagon. And it's, there's, there's moments where those particular songs, uh, like May 16th or When Worlds Collide, they take you back to that game, to certain levels. In 2012, when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD came out, the developers included some of those old songs, but also new ones. They said that they were trying to do the same thing with these new songs that the old songs did in the original. That whenever you hear these songs, it'll conjure images of this game. And with some of them, it was successful. And with one in particular, for me and my brother, and that song was Teenage Blood by Apex Manor. That song came from the album The Year of Magical Drinking that was released one year earlier in 2011. And it quickly became one of our favorite new songs on that game. Because of Teenage Blood, Apex Manor became one of those bands that we kind of checked up on every couple of years to see if they released anything new. And unfortunately, they just didn't. They were pretty quiet for eight years. And here, finally, in 2019, we have their second album, Heartbreak City. And that's what we're talking about today, out now on Merge Records. The main driving force behind Apex Manor is singer and songwriter Ross Flournoy, who had a band prior to Apex Manor. However, he was experiencing a major bout of writer's block after that band disbanded. Inspiration suddenly struck years later when NPR sponsored a songwriting contest. The sudden inspiration produced many songs and several of them ended up on the first Apex Manor album. The Year of Magical Drinking is an okay album. Teenage Blood is definitely the standout track on there. It has this wonderful blend of early alternative rock kind of reminiscent of the replacements as well as some punk attitude and even a little bit of heartland rock thrown in there and the hooks on it really just captivated me in a way that other songs don't the rest of the album i can kind of leave or take it but there is still some nice level of personality to it a lot of the songs still kind of carry that early alternative and heartland rock flavor and while, you know, it doesn't really stick with me when I'm listening to it, it's pretty enjoyable. When I saw the announcement that Heartbreak City was coming out, I had very high hopes for this album. I was hoping that there would be at least a couple more tracks that would scratch the itch that Teenage Blood did. But after listening to it, I'm kind of sad to say that it really doesn't. As usual though, I'm gonna to try to say something nice about this album before I go into what I don't like. And I will say that there are a small handful of tracks on here that are pretty enjoyable in the moment of listening to them. Unfortunately, these same tracks, much like the first album, don't really have much staying power. After I'm done listening to the album, I would be hard pressed to be able to hum any of the melodies that I just heard. Another nice thing that I'll say is that where Flournoy is pretty clearly drawing his inspiration from is a well that is not often drawn on when it comes to the inspiration of a lot of modern alternative and indie rock. So it's nice to see this uh, era, this brand, of early alternative rock getting a little bit of recognition. But it's hard for me to keep talking about that without shifting gears into the negatives of this album. So I'm just gonna do it right away. Right out the gate, when you start listening to this album, you're aware of the tonal shift between the Year of Magical Drinking and Heartbreak City. You're met with feedback and noise and fuzzy guitars and everything, and but still some nice kind of poppy melodies along with this noise and then 
there's also Floor Noise vocals on this album are a lot less dynamic. There's less urgency and he has a much more deadpan delivery in his vocals. And it didn't take me long to draw a comparison with Dinosaur Jr. Perhaps the uh, poster child of that 80s alternative sound that I just described earlier. And to be clear, while there are similarities between Dinosaur Jr.'s earlier work, I am going to specify that this album mostly reminds me of Dinosaur Jr.'s later work, like post reunion, like the Beyond album and onward. So, you know, if you want to get angry at me with the semantics of it, go ahead, just, you know, be merciless in the comments like I know you want to be. Anyway, one of the main problems with this comparison to Dinosaur Jr. is you can't shake it. There are songs on this album that some of the melodic turns and the guitar tones and everything, you're kind of like, this is almost a Dinosaur Jr. song. It just doesn't have Jay Mascus's guitar solos in it. And it's just a hard thought to shake. And that comparison leads you to listening to Dinosaur Jr. in the end, instead of continuing to listen to this Apex Manor album. And this isn't isolated to just the opening track, it's the first three tracks. There are moments in them when I'm listening that I hear Dinosaur Jr. Um, and then there's another track later on that does the same thing. Unfortunately, these tracks end up being the most memorable part of this album. Everything else is either overly drawn out. There's two tracks that uh, are about five minutes and 20 seconds long and they just drag on far too long. All the other tracks are over three minutes, some over four, and they just, you, you kind of wonder when is it gonna end? You're listening along and you go and look at your phone and you're like, oh, I'm still in the middle of this one. And that's kind of a testament to how unremarkable these tracks are. There's nothing really grabbing about them. They're just kind of in the background and they just kind of fade away. And this is particularly disappointing because like I said on the first album, even though it wasn't particularly memorable, it wasn't a album where every single song will stick in your head it did have at least one that did, and there was still some individuality, some personality to the songwriting that was on it. And all of that just seems to be gone in favor of mimicking another sound. Overall, I give Heartbreak City a two out of five. The songs that are on here, while they're not terrible, are not memorable. And the ones that do catch your ear while you're listening to it, catch it for the wrong reasons, because they remind you of something else and you'll probably end up listening to the better music when you're done with the album anyway. It's a pretty disappointing follow-up to an album that we waited way too long for. Before I sign off, I'm gonna add another little uh, thing into my reviews here. Uh, since it's becoming clearer and clearer that I'm only going to be releasing one video a week and sometimes not even that, I've decided that I'm gonna start giving suggestions at the end of these reviews of other stuff that's come out over the week that I think would be worth a listen to you. Just so you know some of the other stuff that's out there, uh, some of the other stuff that I've been listening to, some of the stuff that I've been enjoying. So to kick it off this week, uh, we're gonna start with Denzel Curry's Zoo album. Now, I know most of you are probably still listening to Tyler's Igor, but if you can pull yourself away from that one long enough to listen to Zoo over here, it's a pretty dang good rap album. Um, I was very impressed with it, and it's probably one of the better rap albums that I've heard this year so far. Along with that, for you metal fans, uh, thrash metal pioneers Death Angel have also released a new album called Humanicide, and it's pretty good. This, these guys have been pretty consistent over the past few years, and this album is no exception. And for everyone else, I'm going to suggest uh, the new album Bitter by Collidable. This is a Finnish band that is heavily, heavily inspired by 70s rock, uh, some prog rock, and some very early metal music, but they kind of blend all this together in a way that really hasn't been done before. It really kind of grabs your ear with the way that they go kind of frantic with their riffs and their rhythms and everything. Uh, there's lots of fuzz, lots of phaser. It's just all around a pretty good album. I think a lot of people will uh, be into it. Uh, I just don't know how many people are gonna be shouting it out. So I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. Go and listen to Collidable, you, you won't regret it. But that's gonna do it for this round of Continuous Thunder and I'd like to know your thoughts. Did you listen 
listen to Heartbreak City? Did you like it? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? You can go ahead and leave those thoughts down in the comments. I'd also like to know what you guys think of my suggestions uh, that I gave you and if you want to hear more suggestions on other videos. Quick reminder that you can follow the channel on Instagram and Twitter. The handles will be on the screen and the links will be down in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.